Hello and welcome to the subject of poetry, lesson two, for the students of Department of Education. Before we start, let's first review lesson one. That is why we have a review of lesson one. If we recall to your mind and go back to lesson one, the following are the topics we discussed. The number one is meaning of poetry. That is to say, what is poetry? We talked about in detail. The second point is definitions of poetry. The third point we discussed in the last lecture was functions of poetry. The fourth point, analysis of poetry. And the analysis of poetry has four subcategories. What kind of poetry? We discussed about persona. We also talked about imagery and sound patterns were also discussed in detail. So these are the following topics we discussed in detail in our lesson first of poetry. So try to go back to the lesson, try to reconnect yourself before you are going to start the lesson two. So we move on to the next page. This lesson, lesson two, is about language of poetry. But what is language of poetry? Let's discuss. In this lesson two, we shall be discussing the following items, the following topics. Number one is what is language of poetry? Number two, difference between parts of a speech and figures of a speech. Number three, types of figures of a speech. And we have many figures of a speech, but we have but here we have selected some of them and the most common ones. Number one, simile, metaphor, personification. We move on to the next page. Hyperbole, alliteration, assonance, consonance, euphony. Eight figures of a speech we have selected for our discussion in this lesson two. We move on to the next page. The first topic, what is language of poetry? Look here, point number one. Language of poetry is also known as poetic language. Whether you call language of poetry, whether you call poetic language. Briefly, it means the language or the style of language the expression of language used in poetry. Do you think the language of poetry is the same as the language of prose? Of course not. Then in what way this is different? How the language of prose is different from the language of poetry? There are some elements that make language of poetry different from language of prose. What are those elements? What are those descriptions? What are those differences? These things we can be talking about. So either we call language of poetry or we call poetic language. More or less both are same. Point number two. It is often used in poetry. Poetic language is normally used in poetry. That is why we call poetic language. Means the language used in poetry. Point number three, it is much more compressed than fiction. Look, the language of poetry is more compressed, more compact, much more organized. That is to say, you have to express highest form of ideas in a fewest words. You have to be very selective. You simply can't go on writing, go on using words no you have to be very very selective and careful in using the words in poetry 
that is why sometimes we call diction the selection of words so try to say big ideas in as in as smaller sentences as possible that is why we call it compressed than fiction fiction means fiction refers to drama fiction may also refer to short story novel look the language of fiction you have the freedom you can go on expressing go on writing no problem at all so long as you have ideas so long as, so long as you have patience you can go on expressing but the language of poetry no your ideas must be compressed you must confine your expression in a few waste of words go to the next point it does not follow grammatical rules look the language of poetry has its own grammar has its own law it does not follow the normal pattern of grammatical rules sometimes it violates sometimes it does not obey the grammatical rules it sets its own rules that is why we call it does not follow grammatical rules next language of poetry evokes emotions in a reader the language of poetry is so beautiful is so moving is so present is so attractive that it evokes emotions in a reader the reader is impressed the reader feels more affected in the way language is used in poetry next it uses literary devices or techniques to beautify expressions and color ideas the language of poetry as i told different from the language of prose but in what way the language of poetry becomes more melodious in what way it becomes more evocative that is to say evokes emotions we use a lot of techniques we use a lot of literary devices and these techniques and literary devices here they are mentioned they beautify your expressions they color ideas they make your expressions more beautiful more impressive and more effective that is why we use literary devices we shall be discussing this term just after a few seconds so these are the following points about language of poetry all points are important why because they are already written in brief so please keep them in your mind we move on to the next now sorry this should be the second point not one difference between parts of a speech and figures of a speech why i compare between the parts of a speech and figures of a speech because in order to understand figures of a speech it is better we should also know what are parts of a speech and of course you know what are parts of a speech i need not go into details here i have just written two points just to make you feel the difference between parts of a speech and figures of a speech so parts of a speech you already know i'm just refreshing the idea look at the first point parts of a speech refer to grammatical terms such as noun pronoun verb adjective and so on so as you know parts of a speech belong to grammar they normally refer to noun pronoun verb adjective and so on you have nine parts of a speech in different books in different ways sometimes eight sometimes nine it doesn't matter but what do they do what are the functions of parts of a speech go to the next point parts of a speech help in the construction of grammatically correct sentences so parts of a speech help us in making grammatically correct sentences help us in the construction of grammatically correct sentences in short and in a simple manner parts of a speech help us how to make sentences simply and normally these are the functions of parts of a speech 
we move on to the next figures of a speech now look back parts of a speech just refer to grammatical items grammatical terms in a sentence like noun pronoun verb adjective and so on helping us in making correct sentences but look at figures of a speech they are different how they are different look at the first point figures of a speech are deviation from the ordinary use of words in order to create more effect in expressions look figures of a speech are not parts of a speech here we are not talking about grammatical items we are going much beyond that so figures of a speech are deviation deviation you know deviation when you deviate when you turn away from the normal path from the common path from the general path so figures of a speech are deviation turning away from the ordinary use of words we don't use ordinary we don't use words or language ordinarily in figures of a speech and why we don't do use it because we want to create more effect in our expressions we want to our we want to make our ideas more impressive that is why we don't use words ordinarily that is why we deviate ourselves in using the language from the ordinary set of words and language go to the point number 2 in figures of a speech words are made to carry a meaning other than what they ordinarily signify so we not only deviate from the normal use of words we also don't carry the normal meaning the meaning is also not direct it is indirect implied hidden it has layers of meaning so meaning other than what they ordinarily signify means that a meaning at the level of meaning words are made to communicate meaning in so many other different ways next there are a number of figures of a speech such as simile metaphor personification and so on and what are the figures of a speech we shall be dealing with the examples of figures of a speech in our next section and you will come to know so there are a number of figures of a speech such as simile metaphor personification and so on so these are three points and they are important of course all the points are important so please keep them in mind because they are already very short now we move on so i hope you understand the difference between parts of a speech and figures of a speech remember don't forget parts of a speech talk about grammatical terms grammatical items how parts of a speech are used in making of correct sentences but figures of a speech they are deviation from normal and ordinary use of words figures of a speech they carry meaning other than what normally they signify and figures of a speech are achieved through various terms such as simile metaphor personification and so on we move on to the next the next figures types of figures of a speech look here types of figures of a speech and we have a number of types of figures of a speech we shall be discussing about the number one is simile then we have metaphor we have personification then we have hyperbole and so on we have a number of figures of a speech let's talk about first a simile is a figure of a speech that makes a comparison showing similarities between two different things number one point simile first of all is a figure of a speech don't pronounce it a smile a smile is a different word it is simile s i m i l e simile so it is a figure figure of a speech and it makes a comparison 
showing similarities between two different things two different things are having or showing similarities and then they make comparison go to the point number two it makes comparison with the help of using as or like in simile it is very important to use as or like so we compare two different things showing similarities by using as or like go to the next it is also known as direct comparison so simile is also known as direct comparison because the comparison is direct not indirect and with the examples we can understand the concept much better because sometimes examples are much more helpful in understanding the idea of the term so let's look at the example look here number one he is as brave as a lion look here he the, the subject he the person he is compared with what with a lion so two objects here he and the lion is compared with each other so you can see here between two different things so he is a person lion is animal but two person and lion is compared uh, with what bravery so he is as brave as a lion so we can see that there are showing similarities between two different things so we are comparing between man and animal two different things but still there is a similarity and this that similarity is reflected through the word brave and we are using as so he is as brave as a lion go to the next he is as cunning as a fox cunning means a clever person so he's as cunning as a fox the same example we are using as and two different things being compared next she is like a red rose here she is being compared with the red rose using like next he is like rock so he is being compared with rock with the help of like so simile is a direct comparison we compare two different things showing similarities and we use as or like we move on to the next metaphor look a metaphor is a figure of a speech metaphor is also a figure of a speech that makes a comparison showing similarities between two different things without using as or like in metaphor we don't use as or like but we also compare the way we compare in simile in simile we compare between two things but we use as or like in metaphor we also compare but we don't use as or like it is also known as implicit implied hidden or indirect comparison so uh, metaphor is also known as in direct comparison it is also known as implicit or implied or hidden why because the comparison is not direct the meaning is hidden it is implied let us have example he is a lion look there is no as there is no like but he is directly being compared with a lion likewise he is a fox go to the third example camel is the sheep of desert next necessity is the mother of invention life is a fashion so in all five examples we haven't used as or like but the comparison has been made and the comparison is not direct it is indirect it is hidden it is implied it has layers of meaning so this is known as metaphor now we move on to point number three figures of a speech that is personification look at it is a literary device that gives human characteristics to something that is non-human look here we, it is a literary device 
literary device or figures of speech both are almost the same when we say figures of speech it means that figures of speech include literary devices literary tools what are the literary devices what are the literary tools what are the figures of speech we have already talked number one simile number two metaphor number three noun personification so they are known as literary devices sometimes literary tools or they are also parts of figures of a speech so what is personification first of all it is a literary device it is a figures of a speech figure of a speech and in personification it gives that gives human characteristics to something that is non-human means personification is something personification in personification we arrange words in such a way that non-human object is made to look or see or behave like human go to the next in other words we personify or represent non-human object as human so in personification what do we do we personify we try to represent non-human object that is to say non-living thing is made to appear as living thing how let us have examples through examples you can understand how non-living thing can be made to act as living one living object living thing examples the curtains danced in the breeze look curtains you know curtains we hang at the window in the room so when breeze breeze means gentle wind so when the wind blows the curtains move normally we say like this but here we have used the word danced the dance word is normally used with human being the boys dance the girls dance we dance in the party and all that but here the curtains non living things are made to dance so this is like non living things being made to act like a living object that is why the curtains danced in the breeze and go to the next opportunity seldom knocks the door you know knock knocking the door when somebody hello who are you please come in knock the door so normally human beings knock the door because they want to enter the room they want to have a permission from us but here we are using this knocking the door with opportunity opportunity seldom knocks the door and opportunity is non living object non living thing not human go to the next the fire ran wild you no know, run normally we use run with human beings with boys and children we run but here the run is being used with fire the fire ran wild is spread very fast next time ran away from him so look here time with the time the word ran so non living being made to use as living being made to present as living the sun looks angry look the word angry normally we use with human beings when you are angry when somebody is angry she is angry he is angry so and so forth so the word angry is normally associated with human beings but here angry is being used with the sun the sun looks angry it means the sun is very hot something like that it is up to you to derive the meaning so personification means personification is a literary device is a figure of a speech that adds that gives human characteristics to non human object that is the idea behind this we move on to the next point number 4 we have hyperbole it emphasizes the importance of something in hyper in hyperbole we emphasizes the importance of something means something is more important than it appears in other words it overstates 
or exaggerate something means in hyperbole we overstate something we exaggerate something it is normally used in our daily life sometimes we don't realize but it is all the time being with us in our speech in our daily life in our daily language look at the examples examples will help you understand the concept number one I am so hungry I could eat camel means look can anybody eat a camel no but here the incentive intensity of hunger is being described that the person is so hungry that he can eat a camel he can eat sheep or he can eat cow so here exaggeration overstating of something emphasizing the importance of something importance of hunger so i am so hungry i could eat a camel normally it does not happen but we are just trying to give more importance to the feeling of hunger by such expression next a million thanks to you for your help a million thanks you cannot say a million thanks you cannot practically it is not possible that you can keep on saying thank you thank you thanks 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 a million times can you do no but we say a million thanks it is exaggeration it is overstating something it is like emphasizing the importance of things likewise we have next i have read this book 100 times can you read any book 100 times normally we don't do but here we have done it i am so sad that i am drowning in tears now can anybody get drowned in tears no but it reflects it emphasizes the importance of being sad so hyperbole is also one of the most important i'm sorry also one of the most important figures of a speech and we always use in poetry so these are the examples and these are the definitions or explanations you can say we move on to the next number 5 alliteration the repetition of a consonant sound in the beginning of words in a sentence so alliteration is the repetition of consonant sound and that consonant sound we use in the beginning of words in a sentence in the beginning of words in a sentence how look at the examples betty bought butter but the butter was bitter look at the beginning of the consonant sound repetition of a consonant sound in the beginning of each word in the sentence like ba betty bought ba butter but butter bitter so look in this sentence we find a number of repetition of consonant sound sounds at the beginning of words in a sentence likewise nick needed new notebooks look at the underlined sounds na nick needed new notebooks go to the next vidad will wed wali the on wednesday look the wo sound wo or will wed wo on wednesday next we have fatima fried fish on friday look the sound for 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 so we have alliteration repetition of consonant sounds in the beginning of a sentence we move on to the next point number 6 assonance the repetition of a vowel sound within words phrases or sentences it is also called vowel rhyme look we have alliteration repetition of consonant sounds in the beginning of words in a sentence that we did now assonance repetition of vowel sound within words or within phrases in sentences and it is also called vowel rhyme how look examples go slow on the road go slow on the road look here o here slow also o sound 
and here root o sound next men sell the wedding bells look the sound vowel sound here men here sell here wed wedding and bells look at here point number 3 sentence number 3 example number 3 the engineer held the steering to steer the car look here the sound engineer steer you steer you the ear sound look here a stitch in times saves nine look at the sound i i i times i nine i let the cat out of the bag look at the sound cat a b b a a in the middle look within words so the repetition of vowel sounds within words or phrases or sentences we call it assonance we move on to the next point number 7 consonants the repetition of a consonant sound at the end of words in a sentence look alliteration repetition of consonant sound in the beginning but consonants the repetition of a consonant sound at the end of words in sentence and give examples the big ugly frog leaped on a log you can see at the end we have this sound big g frog g log g next example lady luck struck again look at the sound luck ka struck ka toss the glass boss look at the sa sound at the end this sa this sa he has stood on the road and cried look at the sound do do and do so what we find repetition of consonant sound at the end of words in a sentence and this is what we call consonants we move on to the next euphony euphony is another figure of a speech as very important as well euphony refers to the quality of being pleasant to listen to means euphony the quality of being pleasant to listen to euphony is something that makes your poem very melodious very pleasant you just enjoy listening to it again and again even though you don't understand the music is such the arrangement of words are such the rhyme pattern is such the rhythm is so nicely arranged that you just feel like listening to it again and again that is known as euphony we move on to the next example that is to say point number 2 it is formed through harmonious combination of sounds and words so to create euphony what we do we try to form we try to combine harmonious combination of words and sounds there should be melodious combination of sounds and words a good combination of sounds and words only then euphony can be created only then pleasant arrangement of words can be formed to make music to your ears next the word euphony comes from a greek word meaning good sound so the word euphony itself means good sound pleasant sound that is lovely to listen to and we have examples examples will make you Uh, make your idea more clear look at the example if you read this stanza from a poem you will find it has melody it is very harmonious it is very pleasant it is very lovely you just keep on enjoying even though you don't understand the meaning so creating this kind of effect this kind of music music this kind of harmonious combination of sounds and words which is pleasant to your ears very lovely to listen to we call euphony so let us look at the example i read twinkle twinkle little star how i wonder what you are up above the world so high like a diamond in the sky in the sky look how beautiful as yes, melodious you keep on 
uh, reading it again and again, singing it again and again, like a song. This is called euphony. We have some more examples. Some more examples of euphony. The woods are lovely, dark and deep, but I have promises to keep and miles to go before I sleep and miles to go before I sleep. Look, this like deep, keep, sleep, sleep, so melodious, so beautiful, so lovely, so pleasant. This way of arrangement of words, writing poetry, this we call euphonic. We have some more examples, another set of examples. I see trees of green, red roses too. I see them bloom for me and you, for me and you. Let me read again. I see trees of green, red roses too. I see them bloom for me and you. Look how melodious, how beautiful. Effect of euphony is created in such a way. We have another set of examples. There is nothing I could ever say and nothing I could do to let you know just how much love is in my heart for you. Look, here we also have that effect of pleasant combination of words, harmonious combination of words, lovely to listen to. So this way of arrangement of words in a poem, we call it euphony. So in this way, we have almost completed its figures of a speech. Now it is time to talk about questions. Look here, let me first explain. Here questions are a sort of sample models that in the examination questions pattern will be like this not exactly the same maybe slightly different but ideas and the pattern and the style will remain the same question number one what is language of poetry explain in detail we have some points we already talked about language in detail so please write about this question what is difference between parts of a speech and figures of a speech we talked about parts of a speech and we talked about figures of a speech combine together and write and make one good answer then we have number three explain the following figures of a speech and also write one example for each one of them now write explain each one of them and also write the examples Number one, simile, metaphor, personification, hyperbole, alliteration, assonance, consonance, euphony. Sometimes I may ask, write just the definitions, write just the ideas and the concepts. And I may also ask, write the examples. Sometimes I may give the examples and ask which figures of a speech they belong to, depending upon the situation. So here questions mean questions are just patterns, just a guide, just a sample, just a model that you will be asked in such a way the style could be like this. But the questions may not exactly be the same in the examination. I might slightly change the pattern. Okay, so just what is important, all points in the lesson are important, all concepts in the lesson are important. All ideas in the lesson are important. So try to understand the concept, try to understand the lesson and in whatever way the question is asked, if you know, if you understand, you can be able to answer the question. That is all I have to say. So this is the end of lesson 2. Hope we have understood and enjoyed. Best of luck, best wishes and goodbye. Thank you.